Well, hi Nuggets. Um, I think it's been a while since I've sat in front of this camera. It feels like an eternity. Uh, so, yeah, there's going to be makeup. All right, there's a little bit of it down there because I had a great haul I want to share. But that will be at the end because the important part, we're going to kind of talk about it first. So, for those of you who are regular, thank you for coming back. For those of you who are new, welcome. Um, but I, you know, this is not something that's easy to talk about, but I'm going to share it. Also, I want everyone out there, including other YouTubers, it's okay. It's okay if sometimes you get overwhelmed when life happens. We, we don't, you know, control life. There are things in this world that are out of our control and if we get overwhelmed you know you need to take a step back you know self-care you still come first one of my hashtags I put a lot uh, on Instagram is love yourself first I'm not saying like be selfish and be a jerk I just mean that you know if you want to help others you can't give from an empty cup you still have to look at yourself and and I do a lot of helping others I give a lot of my energy and give a lot of me to others and, and every once in a while, I have to take a step back to, you know, recharge what I have. But there was more than one event that was happening around here. And then there was like, um, what we'd say in French, an uh, événement déclencheur. So, you know, just like that one thing that pushed me over. So we're going to talk about that. Yeah, we're going to talk about it. We are. It's, it's rough. Um, it was. And I have to also keep, you know that person's privacy as much as I can because that person was also a, a victim, you know. Um, but I want to give you a little bit of context too that there was a few things that had happened. So, you know, I live where I can afford to live. I mean, one, my apartment is pretty cute actually. Um, I, I am lucky that after four years of waiting, I have um, my rent subsidized through the government, but I waited four years for it. And um, I think that's a long time, but that's for another day, another subject. And the property where I live, it's, it's sort of like a complex, you know, it's shared laundry facility, shared parking lot. And we have a property management. And I'm mentioning that for a reason because I don't want anybody to start blaming that person. Sometimes that person gets a bad rap. I'm telling you now, I I got this apartment and I got with that certain, you know, property management because as no holds barred, she, they had helped me find, you know, places for some of you, you know. So when I was in need of a new place, she's the first person I thought of. And I mean, it's perfect. She got me a little apartment, one bedroom, where I have this space where I can do all my stuff with the YouTube because I have a different angle today. I'm trying to use like natural lighting and then I know there's a shadow, but... I'm learning, okay? I didn't go to film school. I didn't go to YouTube school. I'm just, you know, doing this. Um, so the property management, like I said, um, they do things by the book. And I know that because, again, I've spoken to them, you know, before I was here. And even now that I'm here, I mean, I still help other people that are looking for places through them as well. We we work together. We, we talk quite a bit. And... I'm familiar with what the laws and the rules are when it comes to, like evictions and tenancies and all that whatnot. So, if if you know who my property management is and you're out there bad mouthing them, then you 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 shouldn't. Um, that's one of the reasons why sometimes there are problematic tenants that are still around because when other property management they file for the eviction and, and all those kinds of things, they do it by the law. They do it properly as it should be so sometimes they have it takes them a while before a problematic tenant crosses that line where they can justify an eviction and I mean I live downtown and even at that even at that I can't put downtown as a blame because where I lived before here was in a so-called good neighborhood in this city and I had a drug dealer that lived downstairs and I had a horrible landlord that didn't do crap about anything. Uh, and so, I mean, location has nothing to do with anything. Uh, the property management does their best, you know, when people are problematic, but they follow the rules. So, 
it did happen uh, about five weeks ago or something like that. There was an armed standoff two buildings away from me. So it was in my complex. We didn't really know what was going on, but all I could see when I looked outside my windows was RCMP members everywhere with assault rifles running around, telling us to stay in, go back in, hide. And it started in the afternoon and it didn't end till after dark. It ended around 11 p.m. And there even are some of the details, you know, because I live here, I saw some of the details that I can't share. <laughs> Um, it, I mean, I'm assuming I can't share it because they did not share it in their public, you know, explanation of what happened. So, but it was pretty scary. I mean, we, we did know, we, we were aware, you know, that someone was holding another person hostage at gunpoint, you know, in their apartment, which happened to be in my complex. And that was, you know, upsetting and troubling, but I, I dealt with it okay. I mean, I understood that, you know. Life happens for a reason or another. This this person, you know, felt the need to do that, and they they they're no longer here. They're, that person's in jail, and the victim is is you know physically okay. I'm assuming she probably needs a lot of therapy, but that was that. And then there's a few couple hiccups that happened around as well because they're cleaning up. Um, the joke is that they're gonna make this little gay village of Moncton, which is awesome. You know, we're cool with that, um, but. Just last week, during the week, um, you know, we have shared laundry facilities and, and the laundry is free, so that's kind of cool. So I was doing my laundry and then there was another person there and they seemed a little bit absent-minded and whatnot, but very nice person, I, I spoke with him. But I have my laundry on a timer, you know, I don't want to be that jerk that like holds up a washing machine or a dryer because there's not really enough for the amount of tenants that are here. But again, beggars don't choose, you know. I, I, I have a great place, you know, I'll, I'll work around the fact that there's only three washing machines. But the dryers, they have their difficulties. They have now since been fixed. Okay. But I, I have a timer on it, mostly because sometimes I forget, you know. I, I'm forgetful about almost everything. I have alarms for everything in my life. And, and right now, I mean, I have my phone on, on silent, but I'm, I'm waiting to hear back. Um, about a job. So I'm like this close, you know, I'm, I'm at the last hurdle, which is great. And because my DBT skills came into play. So I went you know, to, to get my laundry and th that person for a reason or another had put their clothes in with my clothes in the dryer. And my, all my alarm bells went off. I mean, I had ADHD, I, I have OCD, uh, whatever, you know. All my alarm bells started ringing. And my reaction, I mean, I had a video about it. I was disgusted. Uh, but then I talked it over with my friends and other people. And guess what? That is the same reaction that everybody else would have had. And for someone who's recovering still from borderline personality disorder where... That is a disorder where your emotions take over, all right? Emotions go haywire and, and you sometimes react very badly. I reacted in a way that other people would have reacted as well. So that was like, you know, good, it was a check mark in the good column as in like, I'm learning getting better. But I mean, it kind of brought the emotions, you know, they were kind of like here. And um, I, I do have a screenshot of the conversations with my friends um, that I shared with Carl Ben Jr. for, you know, Sunday's BPD chat, come along, join us, uh, because I sent, you know, a message to my friends, like, you know, like, look, my emotions are taking over, but logically I know that, you know, I don't need to, like, burn my clothes or, or you know, I'm going to be okay, and I asked my friends to just help me keep the logic reasons of why, you know, it's all going to be okay, which they did, which was amazing, and I'm so very thankful for that, so, but my emotions were about, like, you know, here. And I was handling them, you know, I was doing okay. And then the the weekend happened. We're not going to go into specific days. But the day before I went to the hospital, um, I went to bed like I usually do. And for whatever reason, I, I woke up in the middle of the night. 
And when I woke up, I could hear that there was a, a neighbor. Now, I have neighbors up below, sideways, you know. I don't know too, too much which one it was. But that person um, was definitely in need of help. So, I called 911 and they wanted to know questions, you know. I was like, I don't know which apartment, you know. I don't know the number. It could be up, down, whatever. Um, I learned a very long time ago because I got messed up. You know, I'm, I'm friendly. Talk to everybody. I don't really get messed up with your neighbors. So, I mean, I couldn't tell you much about my neighbors other than, you know, the people who are upstairs are super nice. He's very passionate about football, um, you know. So, I wasn't too, too sure. And after a while, I mean, I was still, like, half asleep, but I could hear what was going on. Um... Eventually, you know, I got like fully dressed because I have like a few doors before I can like, get outside. And then I, I, I noticed that um, the SUV for one of my neighbor's um, significant other was parked, you know, in between the building, not in the parking lot, but, you know, right close to the door. So then I was able to tell the RCMP, like, no, no, it's that particular apartment because that's that person's significant other's SUV. He does not live here. But when he comes by, you know, he usually parks way out back, like he's in what's up. And I kind of tried to stay awake. I thought maybe they were going to ask me questions and whatnot. Um, but half an hour later, I, I realized that they um, impounded, the, the, the tow truck was here taking that car away. So I went to bed thinking, you know, he's probably been arrested. I didn't know more than that. And I was a little bit, you know, the nerves and everything was just, I was almost, you know, but I was still kind of holding it together. I, I did let, you know, property management know about it, and they reached out to her, and they're, like, they care, they, they, they're they really good people, um, you know, if they could do anything to help her out, and, um, so during the day, I mean, I was having some anxiety, and I was, I have to say, I have to say was, I was pretty good at actually going to a few stores on my own, because I've been practicing, it was stores that I was familiar with. I tried it for a distraction because, you know, taxes are coming in and I want to buy, like, more equipment to do more of this stuff, mostly. Um, but I do need a new TV because mine's just going. Um, I need to check this. Sorry, it, it wasn't news about that. It was about something else. So, I, I tried going to the stores, you know, changed my mind. It, it didn't work. Um, I, I had to run out of Walmart, catch the bus, try to get back home. Without, you know, losing my shit. Um, thankfully, um, with my Michael Kors watch, that does work as my fall alert as well. There is a guided breathing through the, the fit app part. It helps tremendously. So I was just like staring at my watch doing the guided breathing like in and out because it counts up and down for you and all that kind of whatnot until I just got home. But I was also noticed, I knew that, you know, I was starting to disassociate. For me to not have a thought at all in my brain, at all, I couldn't even remember the last time that had happened. And I know that that wasn't good. Um, so I was on my way to, to get home, like my focus was my house. And then I get here and then that person comes out of their apartment. And, and I spoke with the person to see if they're okay. And then they told me the entire story of what did happen. I smiled and I was thankful that they were okay. Uh, there was kids involved, you know, they were there. And I didn't want that person to, to feel extra bad knowing that I was flipping out on the inside. So during that time, you know, I came in and then I called like a limit health hotline and people and they're like, no, like you should get to the emergency room and, and talk to a doctor. Because you're in shock. I mean, there's a lot of things happening, but mostly that particular incident, that particular incident was a life or death situation for that person. All my mind could think was, what would have happened had I not woken up? And, and everything that happened, I mean, I'm not going to go into that many details, but I mean, it, I woke up just, you know, when it first happened and... I mean, a few more minutes might have had a different outcome. And, I mean, I help a lot of people. I, I don't publicly talk about who I help and what I do. It's nobody else's business but me and that person. But that weighed on me so much. Um, just, I mean, I see them around. I see the little kid around. And, and we all do, me and my friends. So, I, 
It was a lot. So I needed help, and there's nothing wrong with admitting that you need help. So I made my way to the emergency room. It was about 6 p.m. Um, I waited about five hours until I, I saw a doctor. Now, there was a lot of processes to, to actually talk to a psychiatrist. My psychiatrist, you know, wasn't there. They have special ones that are on call. So it was during the weekend. Uh, so I, I waited about five hours, which is actually not a very long wait. That That's kind of peanuts compared to other people. Uh, in my case, maybe because I have gotten so much help that I was able enough to, you know, describe, uh, I don't know, that and like, you know, my doctor happens to be in that hospital, so they had access to my notes and my doctor has, you know, a little thing that he writes that if I ever go to the emergency room and I talk about mental health issues that, you know, if I tell them I need help with mental health stuff, then I, I'm not lying. I really do. Um, but I mean, other than that, I waited five hours and I saw a doctor and he listened and he agreed that I, I needed to, you know, talk to someone and have something. But it was, you know, 11 o'clock at night. So, and the hospital, but the hospital was like, you know, overtaken. You know, there was no rooms and observations. So he was like, well, you can sleep in the exam room tonight if you want. So this was my bed. So I slept there for the night. Um, someone came in around like 9.30 bring me breakfast. Um, not that I could eat any of it. That's okay. No, I'm not mad about that. And then the process is that you first speak to um, a psychiatric nurse. So I, I spoke with her in very big detail, explained. And then she's like, okay, and the psychiatrist will come by. So I waited out an hour, maybe. And then the psychiatrist came by and he listened again. But he asked a lot of questions and it was very much based on like sleep patterns and stuff like that. And, and they wanted to make sure like, you know, um, that there wasn't like no mania happening in there because my original diagnosis way back when was bipolar disorder. But now we've realized that I have borderline personality and I do know the difference. You know, I mean, I do have depression. I have sadness. I was, um, suicidal for a long time that has passed over about the past three months ago. I kind of got out of that, thankfully. Um, so I'm, I'm no longer there. That's, that's an awesome thing. I was able to recognize that. And those are things that I learned from my DBT skills. I'm able to recognize my emotions a little bit better, which helped them help me. Uh, I know that I didn't have mania, uh, but I do have some good thoughts. So I was letting them know that like, I take a lot of meds by the way, like to sleep and stuff. Cause like the ADHD in my brain just keeps going. And they seem to like not be working. There's nights that I'm up to like 3 AM. My brain just keeps going. But they were asking, you know, like, is it all like dark thoughts? Is it bad things? And I was like, no, sometimes I'm just thinking like, what would happen if this, you know, platform were to be kind of successful? You know, what would I do if I had like extra, you know, or what would I do if I won the lottery? You know, because for a while, the lottery was like, you know, five million and, and around here, <laughs> five million, and you can retire for one million around here easily. So, you know, sometimes it's just, and it's not like a mania thing. So for those of you who aren't sure the difference is, um, when you think about positive things like that and a manic episode, it's not like, what would I do with kind of a daydream? It's like, this is going to happen. It, people would quit their jobs, though, you know, because they're so certain that they are going to win that lottery and it's going to happen and they're going to, you know, or they're a singer, they love to sing, they love music, and then they hit, you know, the manic part hits and they're like, I'm going to be famous and, you know, maybe rack up all their credit cards because... You know, the record deal is going to come any minute, you know, that that's a mania. You know? I just had, you know, sometimes I have positive thoughts, sometimes I have negative thoughts, but that's completely normal. So in the end, you know, they did pass on the message to my psychiatrist. He hasn't called me back yet, so I'm assuming, you know, my med part is fine. I do have extra meetings with, you know, my mental health worker to work through this. But what we did as a plan is what I'm going to share with you. So that doctor who was a psychiatrist looked at the medications and he had the notes from my doctor and he's like, you know, you're on a very good plan. You've been very stable. This is good. What we're going to do is it's going to take about four weeks and we're going to do a hard reset of, you know, my sleep pattern. 
So there is a part of your brain, and he explained this to me, which I kind of already knew. I think it's called a hippothancus. Some weird name like that. Hippo something, whatever. And it, that's the one that, you know, gives out all the chemicals that, you know, let your brain know, like, hey, I'm happy. Hey, I'm sad or, or whatever. Anybody watch Inside Out? That part. It also secretes something called melatonin. And you can actually buy that, you know, extra off the shelf, which is kind of what I got as a prescription. I do want to apologize if it's a little bit different. Um, I did get the email that I, I was looking for, so I took the time to answer that back. So we're good. Uh, back to melatonin. So yes, your brain usually produces it naturally by sunlight and, and you know vitamin D absorption of that. It lets it all know. But for people who have mood disorders, um, sometimes that doesn't kind of work. And actually, everybody in the world can benefit from light therapy, which is what I have here. There's several different ways of buying a light therapy lamp. Some of them are more expensive than others. Some have fancy things. Um, you can actually have some that like go along with your iPad. I mean, it depends just what kind of money you want. I've had this particular one here. It's a Philips. Uh, I've had this one, geez, since college. So eight years, eight, nine years. It still works, you know. Um, it's the I just charge it, holds a charge. Um, if I'm gonna turn it on, like it, it's quite bright. <laughs> so and that's and that's the point. So the the mood light, you know, light therapy is great for anybody. Like you don't have to have kind of mood disorder or seasonal mood disorder. It just helps. So you just you know turn. Mine's like blue. The newer ones that they have don't really have a color, you know. Um, but it's still the same wavelength. It's the wavelength that you want. You have it like at a 45 degree angle about a foot from your face. Uh, for about 15 minutes every morning. It's, it's what it takes. So what this light does is it tricks the receptors in the back of your retina into thinking you're getting sunlight. And then later on your brain will release the correct amount of melatonin. It's quite simple in theory. And it, it really, it works. I know that there are a thousand articles out there about, you know, the therapy that light can help with when mood disorders. So I'll find one, link it below. So that is, you know, how I'm going to get over this. I mean, with therapy, of course, you know, to talk through the trauma because all of those combined kind of gave me like another issue of trauma. And we're going to work through it, which is, you know, tough and hard, but it's worth it because I want to have a life worth living. I have people in my life that, that mean a lot to me. I have friends, I have, you know, that I've got all of you. I've got something to, to really work hard for, and I'm ready to put in that time. So what that doctor said again is um, we're going to have a high dose of melatonin at 10 milligrams at 8 o'clock at night, and then I have to push back my bedtime an hour later than I usually do. So I usually go to bed around 10. So I can't go to bed until 11. So you really want to tire my brain out. And then I have to wake up at 8 o'clock in the morning, you know, full night's sleep. And then we're going to use the light, but I have a different intensity. And I'm going to use it for half an hour instead of 15 minutes. I'm going to do that for a month. And that should trick my brain into resetting like the internal clock part where you know you should sleep now why some of you are probably asking like why why is that the only thing that's gonna help you with you know you're freaking the f out well for me personally if i have slept enough if my brain is relaxed enough it can pretty much deal with anything almost almost i mean i can't have a full-time job i can't work like full full-time um, but I can have, you know, a few things here and there during the week, which is why I can have a part-time job at a few hours, you know, a few times a week. And the stuff that I do, you know, with no holds barred, I do it on my own time. If you've noticed, there's no, like, schedule of uploading. There's never going to be one. It all depends on how I feel and how things are going. Because um, I'm not in this to make money, all right? Not at all. If it ever comes to the point where I do, it's going to go into, like, a non-profit bank account and go back to all of you. I'm limited to how much money I can make per month because I am on disability and I want to keep that because I live perfectly fine with that amount. 
Um, so if I get ever to the point where I have more than that, I just want to give it all back to you. So that's my plan. But it, so the plan for me to get better is to sleep enough, really get that deep sleep where my brain restores itself. Because also when your brain is in REM sleep, it also equalizes like all the chemicals and all that whatnot, your whole body and it just, if your mind is healthy, the rest of you is going to follow along. So that's kind of funny how it's a very simple plan to something that was quite terrifying. Um, the feeling of, of not having anything go through my mind. It, it, I usually have a bazillion things going on there. But also recognizing that I had been there before and when I had been there before it didn't turn out very well after. This time it did so I'm very thankful and that's why I'm sharing it all with you. So that is the story about the fact that I needed help. I reached out, I got some. I'm sharing that with all of you in case anybody out there, you know, is in need of help. There is no shame, no nothing. You don't ask for help. You don't know how to ask for help. There's a little message button. Message me, all right? We'll, we'll work together on some stuff. And if anybody else has ever been in my situation and they don't have access to the help that I had, you might be, you know, in another country you have to pay for healthcare, you don't have the money, or you're in this country in Canada and you're on the waiting list, you don't know. This is my solution. I'm sharing the solution that I got with you because melatonin you can buy over the counter. Be careful. Be careful. Ask the pharmacist because you can't overdose on melatonin, okay? Just ask the pharmacist what the dosage should be. And then there's these lights. Um, some of them are more expensive. Some of them are less. I think um, a very good one is about $80. And I mean, this one, I had it for about 10 years now and it's still going great. So it's a great investment. So that is that about the mental health part. I did promise you a part about the makeup, but I'm going to break those up into two parts. Um, so if you want to join the next part, uh, it will be me talking about the awesome finds that I had today. So before I go, I do have to give an honorable mention to um, Tarte Rainforest of the Sea 4-in-1 setting spray. So this is the little one. I have a big one behind me. Um, thanks Tarte for that by the way. This one was kind of wonky and they helped me out on that. But it's been holding this makeup together because I made this look about four hours ago, went out, did my shopping, did my grocery, did my panicking and I'm still, I'm, I'm alright enough to think I can stand in front of my camera. So thanks Tarte. Thanks for everybody else um, for tuning in and you can subscribe if you want. If you don't, don't. Uh, there's a Facebook page, there's Instagram, look it up if you do, if you don't, whatever. We're cool. And again, I'm going to talk about, you know, the awesome makeup haul that I just got because I was on budget with my groceries. I was on budget with, you know, my extra spending to the point that I have money left over. Like, this was a great day. So if you want to watch that and tune into the next one, um, if you don't, you know, because some people aren't here for makeup, if you're not about that, then just don't. Either way, thank you so much and have a good day.